Hello everybody and welcome to Facebook Live. I'm Darlene Merkler with Inland Caregiver Resource Center and I'm here on Facebook Live every Tuesday and Thursday at noon with 15 minute tips for family caregivers. And this week we've been talking about the caregiver journey. You know, it would be ideal if people would seek out help. There's so many different programs and help out there for family caregivers actually, and for um, seniors themselves. Uh, but people usually wait until they're in the crisis mode. They're in the midst of the caregiving situation before they reach out for help. But today I want to talk a little bit about that whole journey, you know, when you're preparing to be a caregiver, when you are a caregiver and so forth. You know, being prepared for caregiving increases your chances of staying healthy, stress-free, and happy while you provide good care for the person that you you love. It's important to take care of yourself as a caregiver as well. So many caregivers take such good care of the person they're caring for, but they forget to take care of themselves. And you can be such a better caregiver when you take care of yourself as well. One of the reasons and the importance of self-care is to avoid caregiver burnout. Poor eating habits, failure to exercise, and take care of yourself, um, staying up with your medical appointments and so forth, it can make you, um, he it can head you towards caregiver burnout pretty quickly if you don't do those things. So if you can attend a support group or even individual counseling, which we offer free at Inland Caregiver Resource Center, you will be such a better caregiver and you'll feel so much better physically and emotionally. So how do you take care of yourself? What things do you do? You know, as a caregiver, you're also a mother, a father, a daughter, a friend, and you have so many other roles as well. And some of you dedicate your time to providing care for your loved one, as well as trying to fulfill all the different roles that you have in your life. And you will probably notice as a caregiver, your role will change as you're caregiving for the person that you love, uh, that you love, as well as the role of the person that you're taking care of. You'll notice some role changes along the way. So I'm going to talk about the six stages of caregiving. And the first one, stage one, is called the expectant caregiver. This would be the ideal time for people to reach out and find help, but it rarely happens, but sometimes people do plan ahead. So this is a person that you think that you have a family member that's soon going to need uh, some help. And the challenge is to learn and understand your care receivers needs, such as their health, their emotions, and their finances. And what are going to be the specific challenges to these needs? So the purpose of this stage, the first stage of the expecting caregiver is you're expected to become a caregiver. And this is your time to prepare before you actually become a caregiver. You can uh, research and gather information and find out what resources are out there for you. The key word for this stage of caregiving is ask. You want to ask questions of your care receiver, especially if they may be in the early stages of brain impairment or dementia of some kind. You want to ask them a lot of questions about their finances, about what their wishes are for their care while they're able to answer those questions. You also want to ask questions to their health care providers, also to lawyers and financial planners. This is the time to set up things that can help you in the future. Ask questions to family members who might be involved in the caregiving role. Maybe there are other family members who would like to help you. So that's the first stage. The second stage is called the freshman caregiver. This is when you've begun to help your family member on a regular basis. The challenge to this stage is discovering solutions that work. 
unfortunately, we're not, I always said this as a young mother, you know, you're not handed a handbook when your baby is born. The same thing is true when you become a caregiver. Nobody gives you an instruction manual. You know, you kind of have to figure things out as you go. But as I said, there are lots of resources out there. And through those resources, you can uh, get lots of help ahead of time. So you want to discover solutions that work. And that can happen also by being in a support group and talking to other support other caregivers who have been doing this for a long time. They might have some good information and help for you. The purpose of this stage is you are entering the caregiver role and you have opportunities to seek services. The key word for stage two, the freshman caregiver is find. You wanna find services that can help you, find support that will comfort you, and find ways to enjoy your hobbies and interests. So many times the identity of the caregiver is lost when they become a caregiver. Their whole focus is on the person that they take care of. It's important to keep a part of yourself and have hang on to something that uh, is about your identity. Okay, so stage three is what we call the entrenched caregiver. And this is when your involvement with the care receiver is constant. In some cases, it might be 24 seven, depending on the illness of your loved one. Your involvement means that your day is structured to be available to your care receiver. And you might notice mood changes day to day, depending on your situation, both in yourself and in the person that you take care of. You also will probably notice in this stage that you will be mourning the loss of your care receiver's abilities. This is the stage when you start noticing uh, things that they use, your loved one used to be able to do and they can no longer do. We call this anticipatory grief. This is when the person is still here, but it's not really the person that you used to know. They're able to do less, their personality may change, their physical abilities may be limited. So be prepared for that. And the challenge, um, excuse me, that was the entrenched caregiver. The challenge in this uh, stage, stage three, is to find support and strength to continue. And you can get that through support groups, workshops, counseling, which we offer at Inland Caregiver Resource Center. The purpose of this stage is to develop a routine for yourself and for the care receiver. Pretty soon you'll settle into a pretty good routine. The key word for this stage is receive. Receive help from anyone who offers it. Receive breaks from caregiving. You can get lots of breaks through Inland Caregiver Resource Center. Also receive support. And the importance of self-care in this stage is that the caregiving can have an emotional toll on, on you as well as the person you take care of. And I think asking for help is a form of self-care that we've talked about previously. So it's important to take care of yourself emotionally and physically. The fourth stage is what we call the pragmatic caregiver, and that's a person um, who has probably taken the, the care receiver to a hospital, a short-term rehab center, and other forms of community resources. And at this point, sometimes caregivers start doubting professionals, such as healthcare professionals. Sometimes it's very frustrating when you're trying to deal with healthcare professionals or other people for a loved one. And sometimes caregivers um, become a little calloused and uncaring at this stage because they become so frustrated. The challenge is to reflect on understanding yourself and the care receiver. The purpose of this stage Stage four, the pragmatic caregiver, is to gain a better understanding of yourself and the care receiver. The key word for this stage, the pragmatic caregiver, stage four, is welcome. Welcome the joys of your relationship. Welcome forgiveness and welcome shared activities. The next stage, stage five, is what we call the transitioning caregiver. 
So this is when loving and feeling good about the shared journey between the caregiver and the care receiver um, probably will exist. And the challenge is to let go of fear of the end. You will move on from doing caregiving and focusing on being a caregiver. The purpose of stage five, the, the transitioning caregiver, is the, to begin implementing end-of-life care that was discussed earlier. Hopefully, you discussed that earlier when before the person got to this point of needing care. This stage is about loving and feeling good about your shared journey with your loved one. You also may experience mourning during this stage and grief because that's all part of the caregiver journey. The key word for stage five or the transitioning caregiver is allow. Allow all the time to mourn and grieve that you need. Even though the person may still be here, they may be at the end of life, which is really hard. And you not only are experiencing the anticipatory grief, but you're looking towards the end of life for this person, which can uh, bring on lots of grief. You also want to allow remembrance to remain, remain, you know, remembering all the good times that you had with this person previously. Also allow reflections of your experience. Stage six is the Godspeed caregiver. That's what we call it. And this is the uh, role as caregiver may have ended. And, but you can, you're not sure what are you going to do next. You've been a caregiver maybe for years and and your whole life has been centered around another person. And now maybe that person is gone and you're like, what do I do now? I know many caregivers go on to care for someone else because it's just what they love to do. But maybe you decide to become a professional caregiver or maybe you decide to get a job. But you want to, the challenge in this stage is integrating former, your formal role as a caregiver into your new life. So whether it means you're caring for someone else, whether it's a paid position or not, or you go into a different career, you can always use your experiences that you had as a caregiver. The purpose of stage six, the Godspeed caregiver, is to implement the lessons learned from your caregiving role. The key word for this stage is treasure. Treasure your dreams. Treasure the challenges which have led you to new opportunities and skills. Treasure the opportunities to share information. I have many um, family caregivers that attend the support groups even though their loved one has passed on. And they have a wealth of information that they can share with other caregivers. And also treasure the memories of the, your care receiver. So what happens after caregiving? Stay connected. Stay informed. You, and right now, of course, staying connected and stay informed is done virtually. So through social media, participating in, in maybe community college courses. There are lots of those online right now. A lot of things that have come out of COVID uh, virtually can be extremely helpful right now if your caregiving role has come to an end. And then also apply what you've learned as a caregiver to whatever it is that you're going to do next and consider maybe a new professional field if you're returning to work. So just again, I want to um, go over the six stages of caregiving, which is the expectant caregiver, the freshman caregiver, the entrenched caregiver, the pragmatic caregiver, the transitioning caregiver, and the Godspeed caregiver. So I hope that wherever you are in your caregiving journey, that you'll continue to reach out to Inland Caregiver Resource Center. We have so many resources for you, and you all you have to do is call 1-800-675-6694. Nine, four, and we'll be glad to connect you with a family consultant who can help you. Until next week, have a great day and a great weekend, everybody. Bye.